All right, folks. So there are people walking around talking about the end of the world. We all are going to die. This is true. We are all going to die at some point. So we all need to be more concerned with our own personal end than with the end of the world. Whether the world comes to an end tomorrow, a year from now, or outside of your lifetime, at some point, your lifetime is coming to an end. And that's what you need to be concerned with. Right now, as you're watching this video, as I am saying, your life could be coming to an end. Your life could be coming to an end. A stray bullet could come in through the window as you're watching this video. You could be sitting there eating your ding dong and have a heart attack. You can finish watching this video, get up to go make a run to the store, to go to work or whatever, and die in a tragic car accident. People die every day, and none of us know when our personal time is up. So you need to be less concerned about when and how, and more concerned about what happens after that. Where are you going once it's over? The only reason to fear death is if you don't know where you're going afterwards. I could pass away this very moment and it would be perfectly fine with me. No, I don't want to die, but not wanting to die and fearing death are two very different things. There's a lot of reasons that people may not want to die. I have children, <laughs> I'm married, I have friends and family. I like being on earth. There's lots of things I wanna see and do while I'm here. But guess what, when I get to heaven, I'm gonna get to see all that anyway. But I also wanna be here with them. I want to enjoy them. I want them to enjoy me. So of course I don't want to die, but if it's my time, hey, like Yolanda Adams said, you can't scare me with heaven. You might fear the process of death because maybe you think it's going to be painful or horrific. But again, that's different from fearing the crossing over part. That's different from fearing what happens afterwards. I know where I'm going. I hope that you know where you're going. I hope that if you don't know where you're going right this very moment, that hopefully this video or something that you see or hear in, in the coming moments of your life will help turn it around because the sooner you find peace, the better your life will be. Some people claim they can calculate the date of the end of the world based on the Bible. Now this is utter ridiculousness. <laughs> Clearly, they didn't finish reading it. You can tell me you studied the Bible for 70 years. You obviously missed some parts because very clearly the Bible describes how the end of the world is gonna happen. And one of the things it states is that nobody knows when this is going to be taking place. Now, if you wanna read it yourself, you can look up Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, and it will describe to you what the end of the world is gonna look like. And basically what it's letting you know is that nobody's gonna have to tell you. Nobody's gonna have to uh, tweet you. You're not gonna have to update your Facebook status. You aren't gonna have to turn on the news because it's going to be very clear to everyone that this is the end. Everybody's gonna be able to see it. Everybody's gonna know it. And there will be no questions. Specifically, Matthew 24, 36 states, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. Even while Jesus was here walking the face of the earth, even he himself did not know when the end of the world was gonna happen. It wasn't until he rose again with all power and all authority and when he went up and became a fully spiritual being once again, that he has all knowledge. If Jesus himself, while he was in the flesh, didn't even know when the end was coming, why on earth do you think you can calculate and tell me when it's gonna happen? I don't think so. Mathematically, there is no way to figure it out. You know why? Because earth math and spiritual math don't mix. <laughs> there is no spiritual math. God is above and beyond. Here on earth, we are bound by laws, laws of physics, absolute truths. Our universe is held together by those things. But God created those things. He's outside of that. So people need to stop trying to calculate spiritual happenings with earthly terms. It just is never going to work. Second Peter 3.8 says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day or the Young's literal translation instead of the word like, it's as. With the Lord, a day is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as a day. Meaning there is no way to calculate it. People running around trying to say that God created the universe in 6,000 years because it took him six days and six days equals a thousand years. No, it does not. You're totally misinterpreting it. It's trying to tell you that when you're in the spiritual realm, time is not a factor.
There is absolutely no reason that science and religion cannot go hand in hand. There's no reason not to believe that the universe could have been created millions of years ago by some big bang or other crazy happening. God can do anything. He's outside of our dimensions here, including time. He created them. So there is no possible way that any of these wackos can tell you when the end of the world is coming, especially if they're trying to base it on the Bible. I'm a wacko too. Don't take my word for it. If you've seen my other videos, you know I'm a little bit nutty. <laughs> Don't let me sit here and read it for you. Read it for yourself. Come to know, and, and that's the point of this video right now, come to know Christ for yourself because that's the only way that when death comes, however it comes, whenever it comes for you, that's the only way you're going to know where you're going. Don't worry about running out and buying a bunch of water and canned foods and all that. Don't get your house in order before you've gotten your spirit in order. Get your soul right because then it does, you won't need water. You won't need canned food. Jesus is the bread of life and he will sustain you and he will keep you in the times that you are meant to be kept and when it is your time to go, he is the one that will embrace you and welcome you to eternity with him.